So this is my interpretation of the free response question number six from 2018. If you haven't read the question, go ahead, pause the video and read the question. We're going to start by answering part A, describing a type two error in the context of this specific hypothesis test. Remember, a type two error is failing to reject the null when we should reject it. So in this specific example, the, you know, the company is trying to see if their employees have a higher blood pressure. So failing to reject the null means we are not concluding that it's higher. We are not rejecting the null. So we are concluding that it's the same as everyone else. Okay. So a type two error would be concluding that the blood pressure of the employees is the same as other people in the U.S. when in fact it is higher than other people. That would be a type two error for this test. Okay. For part B, they give you some assumptions. Assume the uh, standard deviation is 15 for this population of employees. And then they're talking about a sampling distribution for size 100. Okay, and then they, they want to know what values of the sample mean X bar would represent enough evidence to reject the null. So I'm going to draw a picture of this. So here's the picture I have. And they're asking about, you know, what value down here for X bar will give us a tail on the right. It's a one-sided tail. So that alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, so we need to find, we're going to use our calculator to find this value here. First, I'm going to find the z-score because on an AP test, we want to be very clear on everything that we're doing. So first, I'll find the z-score and then I'll just use a calculator and find what value of x bar. So to find the z-score, I'm going to pull up inverse norm. Okay, in the area. So Remember, it's always the area to the left is normally how we do it in class. Um, I'm going to use 0, 1 because I want to find the z-score right now. I'm going to plug in 0. 0.95. And that's just going to give us a value of 1.64. So I label that on the curve. And they don't want to know the z-score. They want to know actually what values of x bar. So back to the calculator I go. Put in the area, mean, standard deviation. I like to just put it in as they give it to me here. And we get a value of 124.467. Let's write that down. So I make a statement here that x bar has to be greater than or equal to 124.467. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I was doing this problem by myself, I did not include the z-score. And it's only because I went to the scoring guide and I noticed they also want that z-score. That's why I made that you know, middle step of finding out what that z-score is. But your calculator actually will go right to the to the answer here. So x has to be greater than or equal to 124.467. Okay, on to part C, using an actual mean of 125. So that's real life, 125. It's not 122, even though that's we're testing 122. The company wants to see if the employee's blood pressure is higher, and then actually it's 125. So this curve here doesn't represent the real life curve. So this is a situation where I have to draw the other curve. All right, they want us to determine the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected. So it's going to be rejected whenever x bar is greater than 124, right? So whenever the sample mean is higher than 124, we're going to reject the null. Okay, let me draw the curve in real life. We'll put that in green. Okay, so some things. I draw the new curve. This is real life. Remember, the center is at 125, so the center is already in the rejection area. It's past that point where we start rejecting the null. So that's where the center of this curve is, 125. So I know we're getting a lot of colors on here and a lot of different things, but with the real life curve, the mu is 125, uh, the standard deviation of our sampling distribution is still the same, 1.5. They didn't change that. And remember, that value right here, 124.467, that is the value where we start rejecting the null, which is 122. So I'm going to draw that down and kind of shade it so I can see it. So the shaded region is when we will reject the null. It's past 124.467. So we need to find the probability that x bar will be 124.467 or greater using the actual mean here. All right, looking at our curve, it should be a little bit more than 50%, right? Because it's on the left of the 125. So in my calculator, I'm going to do normal CDF. 
Lower bound 124.467, the upper bound's infinity because we're going out to the right. Mu is going to be equal to 125 and sigma equals 1.5. That's what we got for our standard deviation of our sampling distribution. And be sure that if you are writing out your responses that you label what each one of these numbers are if you write normal CDF. I mean, generally, they don't want you to use, uh, you know, calculators language on your free response sections. But if you do write this down for yourself, then make sure that you label what each one of these are. So here is how I put it in the calculator. Go to second distribution, go down to normal CDF. We have the lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. We're going to hit enter on that and come up with about 64%. Okay, so part D, what statistical term is used for the probability found in part C? Now, if you notice, this probability is the probability that you reject, that you correctly reject the null, right? It should be rejected because it's higher than 122. Um, if you did not reject it, if you're on the other side of this line, that would be the probability of a type 2 error. So this is the opposite or the complement of the probability of a type 2 error. That is called the power of a test. And then lastly, part E, suppose the sample size of the employees is greater than 100, which means N is increasing. Now, what you know about sampling distributions, as N increases, the standard deviation, remember here's our formula, it's over the square root of N. Now, as this number gets bigger, the whole standard deviation gets smaller, which means there's not as much sampling variation, which means these, things, these curves get taller. And as they get taller, they're gonna look more like this. Okay, so they're going to get taller and they, they're, the part that overlaps becomes smaller. Okay, so the probability, uh, actually the power of this test, the probability in the shaded region would increase because this red curve is going to slowly slide this way. Ooh, I should use red ink, but it should slowly slide that way as these get taller, as the sampling size increases. So, so here's how I would word it. As the sample size increases, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution will decrease causing the curves to move apart from each other, this will increase the probability that we correctly reject the null hypothesis, thus increasing the power. That is number six from 2018. I would suggest that you look at the solution guide to this problem to make sure that you're getting all the points that you can on this free response question. Good luck.